The sympathetic inputs, that's something that I, I mean, you, you brought it up, and I think we should talk about that real quick. Um, most dentists think trigeminal nerve, fifth cranial nerve only. And the more and the deeper I get into this world, the more I realize there's something going on in the autonomic nervous system. Absolutely. I am convinced, and I know you are. Could you tell us what you've seen? How how'd you run into it? What did you see? What does it mean? It's a long story. Yeah, that, but to make it short, uh, it, you know, I'm a physician as well. And in my training, I was exposed to patients who underwent orthopedic procedures, say in their leg, and they would develop esoteric pain. And the esoteric pain was accompanied by circulation problems. Right. It was accompanied by skin discoloration, atrophy of the limb, and severe dystonia of muscles. For example, if, if you have uh, what's called complex regional pain syndrome type 1, mm -hmm. CRPS1, uh, in an extremity, it can deform the joint because of the muscle dystonia. And so I had a patient, in fact, I had several patients until the light bulb went off on one, and I thought, my golly, this looks like CRPS type 1 in the face. And it's not supposed to happen there, is what you're talking Well, right? the bias is that it doesn't happen there because uh -huh. physicians know nothing about facial pain, or very little. Right. So they know a lot about esoteric pain in the limbs, so it became kind of natural for the bias to go towards the extremities but to kind of miss it in the face. Yeah. And so I called an RSD expert. I looked around and... and Which RSD is another name for Crips. Yeah, reflex sympathetic dystrophy. At the time it was called RSD when I contacted this guy. It's probably been 20 years. And he, he wrote the book on the subject. His name was Hushman. And I called him up and I said, I have, a, I have an RSD patient, uh, but it's in the face. And he basically said, well, he humored me. He said, I'll be happy to see the patient, but it never happens there. All right. I said, okay, I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. Sure. So he saw the patient, I got a call back immediately, and he said, how did you diagnose this? He said, this has all the hallmarks of RSD, but it's in the face. And he said, I've never seen one before. Wow. I asked him if he wanted to see a few more because I had a whole bunch of them. He and I began to collaborate, okay? He taught me a tremendous about tremendous amount about this particular condition. And you know, at first it kind of settled in my brain, okay, this is a pain condition and there's a circulation problem. But what, what kept kind of focused in the middle of my brain was dystonia, right? And one of the hallmarks of CRPS type one is muscle dystonia. And I was always bothered by the connection to malocclusion, premature occlusal contact, stimulating the trigeminal part of the nervous system to then in turn induce uh, spasms of muscles of mastication. You know, I've always taught it, mm -hmm. uh, but I was a little bit bothered about, about how it was turned on and, and how it was turned off. So I actually started doing sympathetic nerve blocks in the neck for dystonic muscles of mastication. And what was very interesting was that the muscles would turn off like that. Right. And then I began seeing patients with esoteric pain. Mm -hmm. For example, cold sensitivity in teeth, uh, patients requiring root canals, and you'd look at the tooth and you'd say, it but they looks pulp perfect. test vital, right? They pulp test vital, but right. and the tooth looks perfect, but it's 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 diagnosed as an endo case. Yeah. And so I started doing it, the sympathetic nerves into the face hitchhike. They hitchhike with other nerves, they hitch, hitchhike with blood vessels. And so the greater auricular nerve, which is part of cervical plexus, actually covers the lateral part of the face. And it's a very simple nerve walk. It's given just lateral to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And so I started giving those nerve blocks for tooth sensitivity. I was giving those nerve blocks for limited mandibular opening. Sure. I was giving those nerve blocks for protruded mandibles. 
I was giving those nerve blocks where you couldn't get a mandibular second molar or first molar numb. Every single patient responded. One nerve block was hitting muscle dystonia. It was hitting sensory pain mixed with sympathetic pain in the teeth. Right. It was hitting, it was hitting painful teeth or teeth sensitive to cold and so forth. And I realized this sympathetic input has a tremendous amount of, of influence when we move from the neck into the face. Mm -hmm. So that's kind, of, that's kind of been a passion of mine now uh, for many, many years. And, and you realize that things begin to come together, uh, okay? Looking at the joint foundation, a lot of concepts began, began to come together. Realizing that the joint created malocclusion those concepts began to come together. And the third part of that picture is how the sympathetics are interacting with those two systems. Sure. Not only in the bite, but also inside the TM joint. So I have to tell you, just like I have no problem imaging everybody I see, I have no problem psychologically considering that the sympathetic nervous system may be part of facial muscle spasm, maybe part of limited mandibular opening, maybe a part of poor healing, uh, maybe How about a part headaches? of tooth sensitivity, big How, part of headaches. How about uh, root canals that don't need to be done? All the, practical. All the above, right. all the above. And you know, it's not every bad, it's not every bad tooth, but it's a lot of them. We all have these patients that don't respond the way we would typically expect them to. So, for example, that root canal patient. In CRPS type 1, if you do the root canal, you're actually now injuring, you're injuring the nerves that were in the pulp chamber. And so what you do is you actually extend the damage to the nervous system. So you and wind they it come up. back, they come back and they still hurt and they're retreated, and then we diagnose a cracked root, and we take the tooth out, and the pain just keeps marching from tooth to tooth. Right. That's Crips, right. okay? And that's, that's not diagnosing that condition at a point where we could do it. So really, most things complicated end up being very simple. Right. And the simple approach to a Crips patient is to understand that you can do a nerve block to the sympathetics. And once that block is done, you look for the response. And the response is immediate, okay? Now that doesn't mean the nerve block cures the problem. The problem may be something else going on. For example, you know, you could have, you could have posterior prematurities stimulating the sympathetics. So when you do the nerve block, you turn it off, but it's gonna hurt again. Sure. You still have to follow through with treatment. So but you're the doing, genesis? Correct. You're doing the treatment for the right reason and not with a for proper the proper diagnosis. Reason. And you're avoiding unnecessary treatment. Right. Okay. Right.